This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. It's Obehave with Arden Moore. This show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Never underestimate paw power. Dogs, cats, other companion animals, they can and do bring us joy. And they help us through some very challenging situations. On this special episode, we're going to shine a spotlight on an organization called Red Rover that is bringing much-needed paw power to domestic violence survivors. So, please, join me in giving a special welcome. We have three amazing guests today. First up, we have Nicole Forsythe. She is president and CEO of Red Rover. Pause up there, Nicole. Hi, thanks for having me on. You're welcome. And from Safe Voices, they're based in Franklin, Maine. We have the executive director, Elise Johansson. Hello. How you doing, Elise? <laughs> I'm wonderful. And director of shelter and housing there, Noel Coyne. How you doing, Noel? I'm wonderful. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. All right, guys. Welcoming them all. And big news, Pet Pals Red Rover has reached a big milestone. This organization has funded $3 million for pets and their people of domestic violence. And we're going to learn more about what they're doing after we take this commercial break. You all know the drill. Sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. All right. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. As I've mentioned, we have three amazing guests on our show today. And they're all here to help us. And we have, first up, Nicole Forsythe, president and CEO of Red Rover. And then from Safe Voices, we have executive director Elise Johansson and director of shelter and housing for them, Noelle Coyne. Nicole, there's a Nicole and a Noelle, so I'm trying to be careful here. Nicole, you're up. Please share briefly what Red Rover's mission is. So we are all about helping people and animals when they're in crisis together. So we're a little bit unique of an animal welfare organization and that yeah. we are very concerned about this intersection where people and animals are in crisis together. So we help when natural disasters are happening and people need to evacuate and they don't know where to bring their pets. We provide temporary sheltering for animals in natural disasters, as well as other kinds of emergencies that a community could be overwhelmed by cruelty cases, hoarding cases and some community program work. Wow. It is so needed because Mother Nature has an attitude and, you know, people can do some cray cray things. And I think I, I bless you for what you're doing with Red Rover. So thanks for being on the show, Nicole. Sure. It's, it's wonderful to be here. And then one of the groups that you benefit, help, and they help in their community. That's why you're both on. We wanted to talk to Elise and Noelle. 
Elise, since you've got the executive director title, can you tell us what is Safe Voices? I know you're in Maine. Tell us a little bit about your group. Yep. So Safe Voices is the largest domestic violence and human sex trafficking organization in Maine. We serve Franklin, Oxford, and Androscoggin counties of Maine, which are kind of like Western Western Maine, if you look at a map. And we have a few shelters. We run transitional housing programs, all of that that Noel oversees. But we also do a tremendous amount of community-based advocacy as well. Um, and we're also a pet-friendly organization, not just in our shelters, but as an employer as well. So I'm sure we could talk more about that um, later if you want. Do you have anything else you want to add about your group, Noel? I would just say that, so we operate two shelters currently and are in the process of building and opening a third to open in early 2023. Oh, nice. And we were the first pet-friendly shelter in the state of Maine. And since then, our second shelter that we're opening, we have already committed to being pet-friendly. And we're really excited about trying to make Maine be the first pet-friendly shelter across the board for domestic violence survivors. So that's, that's our next drive. And we're really wow. pushing forward on that. Well, I'm so glad you're all here because this is not a fun topic, guys. I know my show's called Oh Behave, but I really wanted them on here because this is a big problem, human trafficking, abuse in the home, both for the pet and people in the home. And I wanted, if you could, uh, Nicole, talk a little bit about this big milestone that Red Rover just accomplished, because congratulations, but it, it says that there is a major problem that we need to address. Yeah. And, you know, when we started doing this work, uh, it's very similar in the sense that people won't evacuate for a natural disaster if they can't bring their pets. Well, people also won't leave a domestic violence um, abusive uh, person if they cannot bring their pets with them. And it goes even further because they're often used in the abuse. So yeah. people are manipulating them to stay or come back or using threats, violence, aggression against the pet to intimidate the person. So it's very, it's very, very important that pets leave with the survivors. And so we started this work and slowly built up. We give grants to domestic violence shelters like Safe Voices so they can become pet friendly. In addition to the financial resources, we provide technical assistance because the domestic violence shelters, um, I'm sure Elise can attest that Noel, Elise and Noel can attest to this. It's very, very overwhelming with it when you're yeah. trying to help a community. And so we want to make it as easy as possible um, by providing the technical assistance, the resources, everything a domestic violence shelter would need to become pet friendly. But of course, the money, you know, is what gets people's yeah. attention. <laughs> It does. We're very fortunate that we've been able to increase our grants now up to $60,000 for domestic violence shelters. Very nice. Um, and that's through support of a lot of funders, but particularly Purina through a yeah, project. Yeah, this is the Purple Leash Project. And can you tell people about that? I like sure. the color. Yeah, yeah. Domestic violence, uh, the color is purple. And actually, someone was asking me about that. So I don't know where okay. the origin of the purple came from. So Elise, if you know, I no, I. I've done some research and uh, all I can find is that it was a color that was picked, but I can't it's a find a color. It's a why. passion color. It's a color of yeah. passion. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So someone, someone just asked me that yesterday. I was like, <laughs> I don't know why where it came from. But so Purina got on board. They were helping a domestic violence shelter in New York City. And then they really wanted to take what they were doing nationally. So um, we connected with them and they helped fund over four years. They started with a $600,000 commitment, but that have actually gone up to a million dollars in providing some of the grants to these domestic violence shelters. So they don't fund all of them, but they fund a large portion. And right. those do fund, they call Purple Leash Project grants. And then in addition to that, they're just really helping build awareness about this issue. Just getting onto some of their products, getting some information, because we know from some research that only 72% of survivors have no idea there's resources available for their pets. Wow. So, there was some other, yeah, sending some information. I wanted to see, and we can bring it home to a, a place like your shelter that Elise and, and Noel are doing at Safe Voices. But you said that 71% of people, women who have pets, who come to a domestic violence shelter, report that their abuser injured, killed, or threatened their family pets. That's quite alarming. And, I, and if we like could eight get, out of 10 almost. So Elise, okay. Yeah. Go ahead and talk about that because you're seeing it on the front lines at safe yeah. voices. 
Yeah, I'll speak a little bit and Noelle can, you know, maybe give some actual, you know, stories without violating people's confidentiality, obviously. But, you know, we've now made sure that we ask people about, you know, all the tactics that the abuser is using. And as Nicole said, you know, abusers are going to use everything and anything in front of them. And animals and pets are no different. And so we hear from survivors that um, as trigger warning, you know, people's animals have been killed by um, the abusers. Um, We have had people who have had to leave our shelter because the abuser said, if you don't come back, I will hurt and harm your pet or I'm not going to feed them. And so we really, I mean, I'm not a statistician, um, but what I would say is- No, you're a person with a big heart, which is even better. (laughs) But my, my guess is it's probably higher than 80%. If you have a pet at home, the abuser doesn't just, they use everything. They use children, jobs, um, you know, if you have a favorite stuffed animal, a favorite anything, an iPad, a pet, they're going to hurt it, they're going to harm it, they're going to use it to, to assert power and control over that person. And so, and again, the one thing you'll probably hear me say a lot is, you know, domestic abuse and violence is a choice that they're making. And so they're choosing to harm the survivor in any way they can. And, can. and very often, if there's a pet in the home, they're going to hurt and harm that pet. Right. Hey, everybody, we're speaking with folks about the issue of domestic violence and how it impacts the pets and the people. And we've got some champions here from Red Rover and from Safe Voices. We're going to learn more after we take this break. So sit, stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi there, I'm Kate Walton. I hope you're going to tune in and listen to OB Hayes on Pet Life Radio with Arden Moore because she's a delight. We're back from the lot. Just check the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OB Hayes. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OB Hayes Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. And this is a topic that needs to be addressed, domestic violence. And I got to tell you guys, pets do a body good, do a human good. I wanted to talk to you guys about the importance, the power of the paw, because sometimes you're having a tough day, but sometimes you're in a real dangerous situation. So we were speaking with uh, Elise Johansson from Safe Voices and her colleague, Nicole Noel is here. Noel, can you share a couple of examples of things without violating privacy? Just to kind of let people know the importance of having places like Safe Voices and having groups like Red Rover. Sure. So I am just as thrilled as everybody else when we do get a pet that comes into shelter because I think one of the most important things is that it makes a world of difference for the person the pet is coming with, but also for the entire house, because it really does make it feel like a home. And I think a lot of people think of a shelter as this, you know, cots on the ground, gray blankets, and it's not. We have a beautiful seven bed old Victorian home. Oh, nice. And then we bring pets into it and it does, you know, Nicole had a quote once in, a, in an article that said, pets remind us that we're still worthy of love. And I use that all the time, Nicole, because that's one of the things we see um, from the folks who come in is that they just feel so worthless, so loveless and not worthy. And pets remind us that we are. We had a guest who was there when Red Rover came in to do the initial build and prior to didn't have her pet with her because we weren't yet pet friendly. She'd been there two weeks, hadn't come out of her room, hadn't showered, hadn't really been able to function and start moving on. As soon as the build was done and the dog came in, she turned around completely. She's stably housed, reconnected with her family. She's engaged in the community. She started engaging in the shelter, cooking meals for everybody. The difference with having that pet there for her, it changed her personality completely. And I know when Hurricane Katrina hit, it was considered a watershed moment where 
rescuers realize that the bond we have with our pets is so strong that some people refuse to leave because there was no place they could go to a shelter that they could also bring their pets. So Nicole of Red Rover, what's happening now? Are we starting to get more places like Safe Voices? What What's it take? What's happening? We made a big improvement. So it used to be that only 3%, around 3% of domestic violence shelters were pet friendly in any okay. capacity. Wow. And now we're closer to 15, just over 15, somewhere between 15 and 18 percent of domestic violence shelters now are pet friendly. Um, but we are trying to get to 25 percent by 2021. Okay. So okay. Huge, it's a huge jump, um, but we're pretty confident that we're going to get there. And, um, you know, as you're kind of sharing these stories, I think it's important to remember that not only is it important to get the pets out with the survivors for the domestic violence continuity, like making sure they don't go back, making sure they get out of their situation. Yeah. You know, obviously they're part of the healing process. Absolutely. And so many stories, you know, like what Noel was saying with this woman who finally came out of her room, we've heard of kids, you know, rem remembering that the, the whole families often go to these domestic violence shelters and hearing kids who won't talk unless they're around their, their pet. And so we, you know, we know um, as animal lovers, how important our human animal bond is to us. So there's research that shows this now that the oxytocin, that bonding. Oh hormone, yeah. I call oxytocin the cuddle hormone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it appears that oxytocin plays a mediating role in trauma recovery. So we know, you know, trauma is pervasive. There's all different types of trauma, but the trauma from domestic violence is pretty very, very significant. And so having that oxytocin to help essentially just calm the nervous system down so that you can potentially get into the therapy that you need as you're recovering. Well, I know, um, Elise, could you maybe talk a little bit about the role that therapy pets play at agencies like Safe Voices? Not everyone at, Love at Safe Voices is as obsessed with animals as I think Noelle and I are. We're, we're kind of like, we're <laughs> the a good obsession for being yeah. obsessed with all animals. But I had a staff member come to me sometime in the past year, and she oversees all of our anti-human trafficking and uh, anti-sexual exploitation work. And she said, goodness, I would just love to see if Safe Voices could get a therapy animal. What would that look like? What could this do for survivors? What yeah. could this do in the courts and in the jails and, and in the shelters? And so we did a whole bunch of research. There's a woman up here in Maine um, she's a veteran. She started an organization um, called Mission Working Dogs, I believe they're called. And so she does um, service animal training here in Maine, and she's building a whole campus where people can come and get trained with their service animal. But she's now also doing um, therapy animal training. Good. And so we now have a Safe Voices therapy dog. His name is Ollie or Oliver, but we call him Ollie. Oh, don't say Oliver because that's <laughs> my dog's favorite cousin's name. Watch it. Kona, Oliver. What? <gasps> that's her doggy friend. She well, and what, well, and Ollie has a nickname when he's acting like a wild puppy. We call him Ollie Gob because he's like a goblin. But he's wonderful and he is um, beautiful and amazing. And he's probably a third of the way through his training. Good. He has already made a profound impact on survivors and staff. You know, he just like walks in the building. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you walk into Noel's office or my office or something. And he's like, we're on the floor and he's just on us. <laughs> There was a great book written by a great veterinarian, Dr. Marty Becker. He's been on our show. He's my pal for many years, The Healing Power of Pets. And all of this is being documented by the Mayo Clinic and other places. Getting a pet prescription is good. It's no pills need to be swallowed. I do applaud the recognition of therapy pets. Obviously, I have two. I have my dog, Kona and my cat Casey, and we go to memory care centers, but you've got me intrigued to think about what role that they may play to shelters for folks dealing with domestic violence. It's like, you're kind of opening up our eyes, I think, um, because, and this human trafficking, I don't know, Nicole from Red Rover, if you wanna take this on, we don't think it's gonna happen in our city, in our state, yeah, it is. Yeah, and I don't have the statistics. I'm sure Elise can share the statistics on the actual trafficking, but just domestic violence, the numbers shock me. So really? one, yeah, so one in three women will experience domestic violence at some point in their lifetime and um, one in four men. So this is these are huge numbers. So I think that is another thing that um, 
a lot of people don't realize is how pervasive domestic violence is and domestic abuse. Also the psychological impacts of domestic yeah. violence. A lot of people think of it as, I think it used to be called the battered woman syndrome or something like it used to oh, have yeah. a, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you think of that and, and you, you know, you envision battering hitting, but the psychological abuse in relationships can be equally devastating. And again, pets are used in that as well. So the pets may be physically harmed in domestic violence, but they also could just be psychological logically impacted by the yelling, by the abuse, by the, the power. Oh, they quiver, they shake. I mean, they're sentient beings with emotional ranges. And I totally agree with that. What are some things that people can do if they suspect a friend may be in an abusive situation? Um, I don't know who wants to take this on. Raise a paw. Who wants to do this one? Oh, Noelle. Is gonna do Noelle. This one? All right. Noelle, I mean, seriously, this show goes out to half a million people. We're the longest running pet podcast on the air since 07. What can you do to help others help people that may be having domestic violence situations? And I got to tell you, I could never leave my pets. I will never leave my pets. I grew up in an abusive situation. I left home the day I graduated and I took my cat Corky and I'm like, I am not leaving my cat in that violent home. And I'm glad because I can't even imagine having to leave a pet, a child or whatever because of an abusive situation. So talk to us, what can we do to help our friends that need our help? Yeah, no, I think, I think that's so very important because one of the most important things for a, a survivor is the support system okay. and a support system that's coming judgment free, blame free, not asking your friends and family, why don't you just leave listening to what it is that they want and supporting them and connecting them to the appropriate uh, resources and services. There are domestic violence hotlines that people can call. There's a national number. It's 800-799-7233. That's the national one. And they connect you to um, your local and state resources. I like they're, that. They're the ones who are going to know best what's available. Um, there are support groups out there. There are support groups for both survivors and for concerned others, loved family members who want to know how. Kind of like with AA, where you have the people that are dealing with the people with substance abuse and how they, they don't become enablers, right? And one of the things that my soapbox that anybody talks to me is, we're, or we're is gonna, it your litter box? Come on. My, what is my it? litter box. Yeah. <laughs> is we're going to stop asking, why don't you just leave? And we're going to start changing the narrative to say, why doesn't he just stop abusing you? Why doesn't he stop battering? Why don't they stop using power and control? And we start asking the right questions instead of the, why are you still there? Why did you stay? I like that. Let's put the accountability where go it around the room. You probably could do any career, all of you, and do it quite well. So while I you're still here, Noel, what what made you come into this line of work? I have a very personal connection to the work. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I'm doing it because my daughter fled her own very horrific domestic violence situation. And we were privileged and resourced, and we were able to get her out alive. Absolutely. Um, and Great. in that moment, I swore that I would help others do that from here on out. And I have ever since that day. And I can't imagine doing anything else. This is what passion you passion. got. You have purpose. I love yeah. that. Um, how about uh, you, Elise? What brought you here? <clears throat> so uh, I believe that everyone should be able to feel safe in the communities that they call home. And I love work that attends to the intersections of oppression and anti-racism and making sure that all people get to feel safe and what is and i know that sounds like really heady and philosophical no, but no, you're, really, you're stating the facts don't worry it yeah. is really that simple for me is that i feel like we all have a role in making our bed our communities better and i think um, one of the things one of the biggest reasons i came to safe voices is we also run a program for the perpetrators of violence and we do that for survivors Oh, and good. that is why. And to me, I've never worked with better people in my entire career. And I love, love, love Aww, this work. You made and Noelle smile. Good job. It's true. And um, getting to work with people like Noelle is, is incredible. I learn every day from people. And getting to work with organizations like Red Rover and meeting people like um, Nicole has been wonderful. Oh, there's Jefferson. He's our other therapy dog. Um, people on the podcast can't see him. But, but I can. Gorgeous. 
hey, I'm known as treat lady. What's going on? So What's is going she. On? But Noel doesn't let anybody do a trick for a treat. So any pet owner is like, no, they're supposed to do a thing. And she's like, no, 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 he's existing. He gets a treat. That's cool. And uh, finally, Nicole from Red Rover, what brought you into this line of work full of compassion and purpose? So I've been at Red Rover for 16 years. Wow. Even as a child, I was that like hypersensitive child that was saving ants and saving bumblebees from swimming pools. <laughs> I've just always been like completely incredulous as to why everyone isn't like that. You know, as I got older, I realized kind of why, but that there's a range of, you know, hum humanity. But I just knew that I needed to use this kind of over the top, maybe a little like too far on one side empathy for a reason. I have to use, I have to use it. I have to use the sensitivity. It's a gift and I have to use it. And so I've learned to, you know, mediate it kind of because it's hard to, to soak up all the bad things, but I'm pathologically optimistic. I've never had anybody to use that phrase, pathologically optimistic. Nice. Yeah, I just like, because people have called me naive. So now I own it. I'm like, you know, it's not naivete. It is pathological optimism. I just really believe the world can be a better place. I believe everybody can be in a more just and compassionate society or community. And whether it's changing one community at a time or one organization at a time, it's possible. So as we wrap this up, Nicole, Tell people how they can learn more about Red Rover. So redrover.org, our website, super easy to go there. Um, we also have a website called safeplacesforpets.org. And Safe that is- Safeplacesforpets.org, okay. Yeah, and that's actually a, a database, a searchable database. So if someone is looking for a domestic violence shelter or a program that can take care of their pets for them because they're planning on leaving um, an abuser, this is a good website to, to have. Um, but redrover.org, you can get to all of our programs, you know, in addition to this work where we're helping bring animals um, and people out of crisis. We also provide educational resources for teachers wanting to help oh. kids be empathetic, Excellent. understand animal behavior better. We have a magazine called Kind News. That's good. Workshop for teachers to get trained on how to use some books and curriculum to help kids understand animals better. So lots of different stuff. Um, if people want to get involved in this particular cause, redrover.org um, backslash DV help, all sorts of resources that DV you can DV help for us in domestic violence help. Good. And for the folks in Maine, Elise, how can we find out more about Safe Voices? Yep. So it's safevoices.org. We have a whole bunch of information about support and services around domestic abuse and violence and also ways that people can get involved with the work to end domestic abuse and violence. And Noelle, you're so good at numbers. Give us the National Domestic Violence Hotline number again. Sure. National number is 1-800-799-7233. I am so blessed to have you all on the show today. I'm hoping people will understand that they can help in some way. There's different options. And I just wish you continued success. And I think power to the paw, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I also want to take this moment to thank my producer, Mark Winter. He is the surgeon of sound. He is the executive producer of Pet Life Radio. We are the largest radio network on the planet. And humbly, our show is the longest running since 07, when we used to use something called Skype. Yeah. <laughs> so we've come a long way. If you want to check me out, easy. Go to ArdenMore.com. Big favor, pet pals. Trying to get more of you on my YouTube channel. It's free. It's fun. And it is simply Arden Moore. So if you go to YouTube, you will see over 400 videos of things that we've been doing, little um, pet tips and everything. So I encourage you to please consider there's no politics, there's no religion, and there's no snarking. It's all about people and pets. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.